perfect music for this next segment. So a lot of kids right now, of course, struggling with online school. It's a tough school year, uh, but a 14 year old student from right here, San Diego, has now been named one of the most promising middle school STEM students in the country. That is quite a title. A freshman at Scripps Ranch High School, Agastya Sidrin is a top 30 finalist in the Broadcom Masters. That's the nation's premier STEM middle school competition. So Agastya, it's so good to have you here this morning. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And now talk about this competition. So what got you involved? How did all of this happen? Just give us a little background on all this. Mm -hmm. So I've always been interested in science and science fair. So I was just naturally drawn. Um, last year, in, uh, in seventh, when I was in seventh grade, I actually qualified to the Broadcom Masters in the top 300. And this year, I had the honor of qualifying for the top 30. So the way that kind of works is that every year, 50,000 middle school students uh, uh, compete in their local science fair and of those about 10% uh, qualify to the Broadcom Masters and through various rounds as I said the top 300 and the top 30 um, they narrowed down to the uh, 30 finalists and I was honored to be one of them. Ooh, out of that many tens of thousands of students in your top 30 that's so cool so let's talk about the project what got you at this top ranking now it's called quantifying the impact of search order bias on voting preferences using a simulated web environment. So I'm not smart enough. You're going to have to explain what is this uh, whole project about? Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of, it's, hand, it's a handful of words on purpose. <laughs> so let, let me kind of break it down. So the crux of it was a report that I read by the Wall Street Journal, which alleged that Google search results were biased. And I was particularly impacted by this, but by the political impl uh, implications it could have because, um, I mean, I read Google News, right? I browse Google News for political content, and so do a majority of American adults. So even the possibility that Google or really any entity could be manipulating their search results has massive, massive consequences on our electoral integrity. And that's kind of the basis of my project. If Google or any entity was biased, if it manipulated its search results, what would be the consequent impact on the American electorate? and to what degree would it impact our voting? And the way I kind of went about this is that I created a simulated web environment, which is really kind of like a mock-up of Google. Um, and I administered a survey with 25 search results arranged in uh, a few different orders. One order favored the liberal perspective, another, fa uh, another order favored the conservative perspectives, and I had a few orders when I switched them a little bit around. Wow. And the really crux of this project, though, was the statistical analysis that I did. So I administered this survey um, among friends and family and using an Amazon service. And as I got back the data, I wanted to see, was there a statistically significant impact um, from before to after the survey once the subjects read the biased content? And the way I went about this is that I used uh, various advanced statistical methods, including the t-test, the chi-square test, as well as a non-parametric Wilcoxon signed rank test. And I actually invented uh, my own statistic called the vote change factor, which measured the magnitude in which uh, people's vote changed uh, from before to after. Wow. And as I analyzed this data, I was really, really shocked. About 23% of people changed their minds from before to after. They actually changed their vote. And this is incredible, right? I mean. 15 minutes changed a lifetime of political opinions for more than one in five people. Mm. And I think that just goes to show the, the truly awesome impact that Google or any other entity has on our elections. Right, which is why we have to be so careful when we're searching for these things, right? I mean, we're yeah. 43 days away from the election and look what you've discovered. I mean, just how much you know news we're getting, where we're getting it from. This is so important, this is amazing. Uh, we also wanna to get to another skill that you have. I'm so amazed by your mind. You also like to play the Carnatic flute. Am I saying it right? It's an Indian bamboo flute? Yeah, yeah. So it's the <laughs> classical Indian flute, which uh, is traditionally played. It's a South Indian version. So you can uh, see it here. Okay. Let's have so you play actually, for uh, a few seconds for us. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's actually made out of bamboo, and it's uh, hand-carved, and it's one of the oldest instruments ever. 
So I can play something for you if you'd Perfect. like. Perfect. Yes, please. Thank you. What sure. a treat. So um, I'll play what's called a uh, thilana, which is usually an, uh, used to conclude a, a classic concert. So it's very fast-paced and brisk. So I'll hope you'll like it. Wow, you just gave me the chills. That was beautiful. You must have some very proud parents standing near you. <laughs> yeah, I think they're too nervous right now. I think they're <laughs> shivering in their rooms. I mean, they raised an incredible kid. You are amazing. 14 years old, Agastya. I'm sure we will hear a lot more from you in your future. Can't wait to see what you do. Smart, talented, so many things. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>